there is a dangerous chemical that may well be in the water you're drinking, and that's apparently just fine with the Trump administration. Check this out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Did you ever hear of perchlorate? It is a, a, a compound that is used in the production of rocket fuel, among other things. It was used back in the day. Uh, they discovered back in the, I, I believe it was in the 30s or 40s, that this stuff uh, killed off the thyroid. And so when people had hyperthyroidism, which is too much thyroid, their thyroid is too active, uh, they would use it to basically burn, all, burn away part of the thyroid. Um, then they discovered that it had just really radical side effects and was uh, not a good thing to be giving to people. Um, but it has gotten into our drinking water, and this is a major problem. Danielle Melgar is with us, uh, the toxic program advocate for the U.S. Public Interest Research Groups, uh, USPIRG.org is the website. And uh, Danielle, welcome to the program. Tell us about, um, first of all, perchlorate, if I'm pronouncing it correctly or not, do correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, you know what it is and why we should worry about it in our drinking water. Of course. Yeah, and um, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, so like you said, perchlorate uh, is a chemical that has ended up in our drinking water. It is used in things like rocket fuel, fireworks, matches, and fertilizers. Um, and it just gets into our drinking water uh, in the manufacturing process. So what are, what are the downsides? What are the consequences to Americans of having perchlorate in our water? Yeah. So when we come into contact with perchlorate, like you said, it can disrupt thyroid function. Um, which can lead to hypothyroidism. So that's the opposite of the condition you mentioned. Um, you know, the thyroid gland cannot pr produce enough thyroid hormone. Um, and like you said, that's indisputable. Perchlorate has been used to treat hyperthyroidism. So we know that it has that effect. Um, and that treatment was discontinued because it resulted in side effects up to and including death. Um, and then beyond that, in children, the thyroid plays a role in healthy neurological development. So it has also been linked to loss of IQ points in children. Wow. So we've got perchlorate in our water. Is the, I, I recall years ago reading about a compound that was super hydrophilic. It loved water that if you got even a small amount of it into an aquifer, for example, it would very rapidly distribute itself uh, throughout the entire aquifer. It, I, I'm, my recollection is that was perchlorate. Am I remembering wrong? Um, I can't speak to that because I'm relatively new to working on the issue of perchlorate. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just, I just can't comment on whether that was, yeah. that was the same yeah. chemical. So at, at these concentrations, and by the way, I, I, probably another data point that we should put in here, um, I'm assuming that this is still the case. This was a number of, you know, a, a couple of decades ago when uh, a member of my family went on uh, long-term uh, thyroid medication because her, her thyroid wasn't working as, as it should. Um, and, you know, we were looking this up and discovered that the most widely prescribed medication in the United States right now is uh, is uh, Synthroid, Synthroid, Levothroid, Armor, um, these uh, brand names for products that basically, you know, replace thyro missing thyroid hormone as a consequence of damage to the thyroid or, or you know, thyroid, hypothyroidism of unknown etiology. Does perchlorate in our water and, and decades and decades of perchlorate in our water have something to do with this um, national epidemic of hypothyroidism? Yeah, so, I mean, since I'm not a doctor, I can't comment on all of the, the possible causes for different types mm -hmm. of thyroid disorders. Um, but, you know, we know there are a wide variety of um, sources of this problem. And, of course, perchlorate is you know, one of those potential is in that causes. list. Yeah, I know there, there, some people were speculating yeah. that it was radioactive iodine from the from the nuclear tests and the above ground nuclear tests in the 50s, too. So the Environmental Protection Agency should regulate this. What's the story? You know, when do they start? Where are they at right now? So back in the 90s, um, perchlorate was found in high concentrations throughout the southwest uh, of the United States. And in the absence of a federal response, states like California and Massachusetts 
stepped up to uh, enact their own standards. Um, but the EPA still has not done that. Um, and they have decided that under the Safe Drinking Water Act, they don't need to regulate perchlorate. And the reasoning for that is that, first, they say that perchlorate no longer appears in high enough levels to cause health problems. And second, they say it doesn't appear in, high in, uh, in enough states' drinking water to be worth regulating at the federal level. But the problem that with true? that reasoning is that, um, well, the reason that they're saying that is that states like California and Massachusetts have taken matters into their own hands. So uh, essentially their reasoning is that their job is done because states have done their job for them. And of course, this leaves Americans who don't live in those states still at risk of exposure. Is, first of all, did, was there a, uh, you know, like with uh, uh, hydrofluorocarbons, um, you know, we banned their production. Has, is there a ban for the production of for chlorate in effect? Or, are, you know, does American industry still make it and use it? American industry still makes it and uses it. The recent EPA decision is only about uh, the incidence of perchlorate in our drinking water, but it does nothing to actually, you know, turn off the tap and and stop perchlorate production in order right. to, you know, then eventually stop it getting into our environment. So do we know if it's overrepresented in the water supplies of, of states that don't regulate it? So in the states that don't regulate it, um, there are there are certain states that are definitely more impacted than others. In some states, there doesn't seem to be strong evidence that um, it's you know a major concern in their drinking water, but in others, uh, it definitely is, and we're seeing those elevated levels. Right, it's remarkable stuff. And and so, what is uh, the U.S. Perg? Dot org. What, what are you all calling for? Yeah, so this particular decision by the EPA is a final ruling. Um, so, you know, there's not, there's not really room under this EPA to kind of reverse this decision. We are, you know, obviously opposed to this decision and in the future um, under a different EPA would push to reverse the decision and start to regulate perchlorate in drinking water. Um, like I said, we don't expect that to happen under this EPA. So we are actually focused on, um, you know, many other toxic chemicals of which perchlorate is just one. Um, so, yeah, we have just had to focus elsewhere for the time being. Yeah. Um, do you think that if, uh, you know, God willing, we get a... Uh, and I realize you're not a political organization. In fact, let me take, let me not use political words, that we get a new administration and a new Congress who actually are concerned about the health and welfare of American citizens, that uh, perchlorate will come back up, that the EPA will consider regulating this? So the EPA has in the past considered it um, under the Obama administration. That was something under consideration. So I think certainly there is a possibility that a future EPA that like you said, is more invested in um, protecting our health and environment, would, you know, entertain proposals to regulate perchlorate. Is there a perchlorate lobby? You mean, is there a specific uh, trade organization? Is there some industry so group that, that is, you know, that's, that's fighting to keep it from being regulated? I do not actually have a good answer to that um, or about perchlorate specifically. Certainly there are organizations like the American Chemistry Council that will tend to lobby on topics like this.